Thank you, Lord. Well, we have Canada Day coming up, and so today I wanted to do something uh, in kind of celebration for Canada Day. Um, our country was founded on Christian principles. Our country was founded on the Word of God. Right from the time when the explorers came over, there was a foundation that was laid in the Word of God and Jesus Christ. And when we think about that our country was um, founded on that, and we think about Scripture, our God, the Lord, is a covenant keeper. Amen? And all throughout Scripture, he's referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And one of the reasons I think that he reminded throughout Scripture that he's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is to remind the Israelites that the covenant that was established between God and Abraham was given as an inheritance to Abraham's sons, Isaac and Jacob also. It belonged to them because it had been established between the Lord and their father, Abraham. And furthermore, the Lord's covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12 and 22 was officially renewed with Isaac in Genesis 26 and then again with Jacob in Genesis 28. For that covenant to be renewed, God uh, initiated it and then Jacob and Isaac willingly responded. And we can apply that, I believe, to the nation of Canada. Our founding fathers, because they, they came and, and set the country in place and in motion under a covenant with God that they wanted this country to be a Christian nation that we can take back as the generations following them that covenant. Amen? That's our covenant that was given to us as an inheritance. And so we can take that back. Why did God bless Isaac abundantly? Why did he show Jacob favor? It was because of the covenant he had with Abraham. That's how God works. He's a covenant-keeping God. And so as we come into agreement with the righteous foundations, they can be reestablished with great power in our generation because of their historical weight that they carry. There's, there's great authority that is released when generations come into agreement with one another for righteousness sake. And so we can take that and say, we have authority in this. We just have to take it. David asked a question in Psalm 11.3. He said, what if the foundations are destroyed? What can the righteous do? Well, God had an answer for that. He answered it in Isaiah, Isaiah 61, verses 4 to 7. He said, And they shall rebuild old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. You shall be named priests of the Lord, they shall call you the servants of our God. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in the land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. What can the righteous do? We can reclaim what God gave to this nation. The thing is, the church needs to stand up and, and take it. We can take back our righteous foundations and be blessed. The first explorers, people like Cabot and Cartier and Champlain, they, they recognized God as the supreme being. They recognized Jesus Christ as king. The first missionaries that came, we have people like um Bishop Fleming and David Thompson and Albert Lacombe and William Case, they all came with the purpose and the mandate to, to establish Christian foundations in this country. 
They wanted to um, share with those who were the native people what Jesus, who Jesus was, what Christianity was. Canada's founders also had a God-centered and scripture-centered outlook for Canada. Sir Samuel Leonard Tilley, one of the fathers of confederation, Here's what it says about him. When the fathers of confederation were assembled discussing the terms and conditions of confederation and the drafting of the British North American Act, there had been considerable discussion the day before and many suggestions as to what the new United Canada should be called. And no conclusion had been reached. So they were talking about what should we call Canada? What should the name officially be? So the next morning, as it was Sir Leonard's custom, he read a chapter from the Bible, and that particular morning he read Psalm 72. When reading verse 8 of the psalm, he shall have dominion also from sea to sea, the thought occurred to him, what a splendid name to give Canada. So when he went back to sitting in the, the convention that morning, he suggested the word dominion, which was agreed to, and Canada was called the dominion of Canada. A letter signed by John A. Macdonald explained to Queen Victoria that the name was a tribute to the principles that they earnestly desired to uphold. They wanted God to have dominion from sea to sea, from coast to coast. That was their desire at that time. Bishop John Strachan, he was the founder of um, Ontario School Systems. Says Bishop John Strachan, a leader who helped form our public education system, stated this, that the church must continue to play a central role in education. You cannot divorce religion from education because schools will inevitably reflect the philosophical and religious biases of those who direct them. Our education system was founded on the Bible, on Christian beliefs. Egerton Ryerson, founder of public education in Ontario. Ryerson believed that his primary task was to make men Christians. Christians in heart and life and temper and work. He was the father of public education in Canada and wanted a common patriotic ground in the education system of comprehensiveness and avowed Christian principles. Hmm. The Ontario school system was to be a Christian public school system. And then in 1896, the public school act came into being. The po Ontario Public School Act of 1896 stated that it shall be the duty of every teacher of a public school to teach diligently and faithfully all the subjects in the public school to maintain proper order and discipline in his pupils and his school and to encourage his pupils in the pursuit of learning to include by precept and example respect for religion and the principles of Christian morality morality and the highest regard for truth, justice, love of country, humanity, benevolence, sobriety, industry, frugality, purity, temperance, and all other virtues. That was the job of the teacher. Wow, how far have we come? How far have we strayed from the original meaning or purpose of education? We have one of the first governor generals, um, he was uh, George P. Vanier. And his first words when he went in to, to, the, to the office and, and met with the, the caucus, he said, Mr. Prime Minister, my first words are a prayer. First words I'm going to say in this room are a prayer. He said, let us first seek faith. Faith in God above everything, faith in Christ and in his church, and loyalty to our religious, moral, and cultural heritage. And then the introduction of the Canadian Bill of Rights. 
In 1960, Prime Minister John Diefenbaker introduced the Canadian Bill of Rights. It began with the Parliament of Canada affirming that the Canadian nation is founded upon the principles that acknowledge the supremacy of God. In 1981, I, I got kind of a chuckle out of this. In 1981, Pierre Elliott Trudeau signed his name to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. The charter begins with, whereas Canada is founded upon the principles that recognize the supremacy of God and the rule of law. Former Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau acknowledged the impact of Canada's Christian foundations by stating, the golden thread of faith is woven throughout the history of Canada from its beginning up to the present time. Faith was more important than the commerce in the minds of the many European explorers and settlers. Canadians owe a debt to the faith of our fathers and to the spiritual heritage which finds expression in the countless ways in our daily life. That was Pierre Trudeau. Pardon me? Well, how that's changed in a generation. Right? How that's changed in, in a generation. Ernest Manning, Canada's longest standing premier, he often spoke of the need for national and spiritual revival and urged Canadians to live in the light of Jesus' imminent return. Our national anthem was based on prayer. In 1980, the Parliament and the National Anthem Act further added the phrase, God keep our land glorious and free to the national anthem, to the poem written by Robert Stanley Weir back in 1908. The national anthem was a public prayer meant to be sung by the whole nation. And one more, our Canadian flag, the maple leaf, by uh, Lester B. Pearson. He's the one who gave the Canadian flag its dedication speech. He says, we salute the future, but we honor the past on which the future rests. As the symbol of a new chapter in our national story, our maple leaf flag will become a symbol of that unity in our country without which one cannot grow in strength and purpose. May the land over which this new flag flies remain united in freedom and justice, a land of decent, God-fearing people, fair and generous in all its dealings, sensitive, tolerant, and compassionate toward all men, industrious, energetic, resolute, wise, and just in the giving of security and opportunity equally to all its cultures, and strong in its adherence to those moral principles which are the only sure guide to greatness. God bless our flag and God bless Canada. That was part of his dedication speech of the flag. And what do we have currently? We've taken God out of Parliament. We've taken God out of schools. We have government uh, allowing and bringing laws in that are completely destructive and totally against the foundations that were set. And we have, if you've maybe heard of the, the genocide bill, where now it has become legal for people to abort their babies based on their gender. That was passed recently. And we also have Bill C-6 and Bill C-10. You maybe are familiar with those. Um, the Cry, which I subscribe to their letter. Um, Fatine, I've mentioned her before. She's very active in, in Parliament and government affairs, and and so she said, as as far as the bill C10 and C6, which um, C10 is the internet censorship bill, and C6 is the conversion therapy bill. She says over the past few days, both C10, which is the censorship, and C6 conversion therapy bill, they passed through the House of Commons. Both are now progressing to the Senate, and it is reported that the Senate is being asked to rubber stamp these without an in-depth committee study. This comes after debate on C-10, 
um, which was also limited by the government in the House of Commons. So they wanted to pass these through without even any in-depth discussion on them. Given the far-reaching potential implications on the freedoms of Canadians, these bills deserve the in-depth study that, is, that the Senate is mandated to do. If passed through the Senate, Bill C-10 will give the government increased powers to regulate the internet content we can both upload and view. This could dramatically impact what information the average Canadian is allowed to get access to and thereby encroach on free speech. If passed through the Senate, Bill C-6 will limit what counseling services the LGBTQ community could have access to at their own personal request. They can't even request help if they want it. It could also limit what faith-based organizations or even parents can teach regarding sexuality. Uh, punishment could include jail time of several years. And so we are being told that um, children as young as five can determine what gender they want to be and parents have no say. Our country's in trouble. But we can take back, if the church would arise, we can take back the foundations that it was built on. Do you agree with that? And so this morning I want to honor, I'm, I'm using the, the flags that Linda put out here, and I'm thankful that she did because God used it to inspire. I want to honor governments, education, health care, indigenous peoples, military and law enforcement, families, the church, and then Revival for Canada. And I want us to pray for these as a church. And so I'm wondering, I, I, I would like some people to come up and grab the flag and hang on to it as one standing in for that particular thing. And I'm wondering, is there somebody who has a heart for government that would grab this flag? Somebody who has a heart for education. Somebody who has a heart for health care. Grab that flag. Somebody who has a heart for indigenous peoples. Somebody who has a heart for the military and law enforcement. We could do that one. Okay, families, Linda, the church. Who has a heart for the church? <laughs> Anybody have a heart for revival in Canada? Remember... Let's see, you're comfortable praying out loud? Anybody not comfortable praying out loud here? With the microphone? For your particular thing? Anybody not comfortable praying out loud? Everybody's good? Okay. I want to read to you. Isaiah 46 says, Listen to me, O house of Jacob. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? So it wasn't that they, they always did a good job at, at staying with God. So he's saying, listen to me, O house of Jacob, all you who remain in the house of Israel, you whom I have held, upheld since you were conceived and have carried since your birth, even to your old age and gray hairs. I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Remember this, fix it in your mind, take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known from the end, from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east I summon a bird of prey, from the far off land a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. 
Listen to me, you stubborn hearted. Listen to me, Canada. Listen to me, Canada. You who are far from righteousness, I am bringing my righteousness near. It is not far away, and my salvation will not be delayed. I will grant salvation to Zion, my splendor to Israel. We can be rescued from this. And so we're going to pray. Each of us for our respective things. So dear Heavenly Father, we just pray for our governments, Lord. Just pray that you can be brought to the forefront of uh, the way it used to be. Uh, you have verses in the Peace Towers, of the Bible, and again, they put you number one, Lord, and we pray that uh, they can put you number one again. So we just pray for our government, Lord, and just, again, just pray for you to come into their house. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll pray with you, okay? You want to hold my hand? Father, we just lift up the education system to you. We lift up, God, the things that children are being taught to listen to and taught to see and taught to take to heart as truth. Father, I pray that you would rescue our children, rescue the education system, God. I pray that you would bring it back to the foundations that they were meant to have, that there would be your will and your truth established in the school systems once again. Father, we just thank you because you are the God of the impossible, and this seems like an impossible thing in our day, but God, we declare the impossible things to happen in our day, Father. I pray, God, that you would just bring your presence and your truth back into the school systems in Jesus name amen Heavenly Father I just pray to you that you will just restore the health system health care system and with what's going on today Lord and the doctors who do believe in you Lord will take a stand and anoint them Lord Lord Jesus we need you here and that we claim back the health and uh, and you are the one who heals. So heal the minds of the government for the health um, care system and hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, we stand on your word, Lord. And the doctors who do believe in you will take a step and a closer look. And that uh, I've met some, Lord. So just bless them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just want to lift up the indigenous people. You know they got a raw deal for years, Lord. Lift them up, Lord, and uh, give them the strength, Lord. In Jesus' name. God, we just thank you for the uh, brave men and women out there who uh, are in the military and law enforcement. Uh, they put their uh, bodies and lives on the line to keep us all in Canada safe. And uh, we thank you that they are held in such a high regard in Canada. Uh, faith has uh, lost its way through military and law enforcement. And uh, we just hope that uh, you can keep their bodies strong and people's faith stronger. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our precious Heavenly Father, we pray for the families. Family is the very backbone of the church, our home, our communities. And I do pray, Lord, I do pray for family restoration. I pray for just a coming together, Lord, of one to another in love and forgiveness. And I lay out to you, Lord, that each one of us, Lord, has hurts and we have burdens that we carry. We carry them for our sons and our daughters, for aunts and uncles. So, Lord, I do pray for every family member, Lord, just to show that love one to another. And I just, I just thank you, Lord, for, um, I thank you for my family and I do pray for family restoration in my family. 
and as well as everyone here today. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, to pray for the church. Lord, the church is your body. Lord, we are to, Lord, be your representation here on earth, Lord, to walk in your ways, to love like you loved, to guide, to direct. And Lord, we just are thankful that your Holy Spirit is here to do that, Lord, and that we have your word as our firm foundation. And Lord, may we, as the church, dig in, Lord. Lord, may we fully commit, Lord, our lives to you. Lord, that we will not be put down, Lord, but that we will be the light to the world, Lord. That we will take back the voice that you have given us, Lord. And that we can go out into the world and we can bring your hope. We can bring your life. We can bring your love, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that as the church comes together as the bride of Christ, Lord, that we will infiltrate, Lord, that we will take a stand in all of these areas, Lord, in the government, in the education, in the health care, with Indigenous people, Lord, in our families, in the military, in the law enforcement. And Lord, that we will, Lord, just be that light, Lord, that you will turn these things around, Lord, that you will give us the boldness. And yes, Lord, they may be coming against the church, but Lord, you call us to stand. And so, Lord, may we stand in that firm foundation. May we stand in the cross, Lord, and what you have done for us. May we stand in all things, Lord. We just give you the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Lord, we just thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you open hearts, you open minds. We know, Lord, that this country and all the countries in the world, Father God, are going through a rough time, Father God, an unknown time of what's going to happen. And Father God, we here right now this morning know what's going to happen. We know, Father God, that no matter what they say about revival, I don't care if they say there will not be another revival. We know there is going to be a revival. And we know, Father God, that your will is a lot stronger than their will. And that, Father God, we know that if we join together, that the revival will fall. Father, we're expecting a revival to happen in this country, even in this little town, we're expecting a revival. And Father, we're ready for a revival. We need you now. We need you to come. We need you to bless each and every soul in this community and surrounding area. There are so many hurting people, but we know that you are greater than all. We know nothing is impossible with you, Father. So we pray for revival, Lord, and we just lift everything up to you and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. You guys can be seated. Our national anthem was meant to be a prayer. So let's stand. We'll close our service with O Canada. We'll do verses uh, one and four.
be blessed this week as you go from this house. Go with joy. Go with peace. And pray for divine appointments. Amen? Amen.